Yep, good morning. We're live. Yep, we got a whiteboard. And I apologize that it's it's actually small. It's huge for us because we travel. This is the absolute biggest. We can get this thing and still make it to preach out of McDonald's. You know, but it was just really hard for me to, to get this all together because of spacing and stuff. So I actually spent like all day yesterday drawing this stuff out, erasing, trying to figure it out. So bear with me, pray for me. It's the first I'm going to learn today with you all. And the reason I'm doing this is when I'm reading my Bible, I get visuals and I and lines get drawn in my head. And like I can wave my arms and beat on the pulpit and stuff. But like some people are visual learners, you know. And so I, I'm, I want to use this as a tool to help me teach this stuff. And the pulpit's still here. We didn't get rid of it. It's just framing issues, you know. And this guy's a little rickety, so just bear with me. Uh, thought we were done with Romans. We're not done with Romans. We're going to start Romans 16. Let's go. Verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you, right? You all know it? So, we got power to establish. And remember, in uh, Romans 1, Paul wrote that it was to establish you. He's getting you built. When, you, when a building's first getting built, it's established. You drive by it later, it's no longer still being established. It is now established. So the end of Romans is telling you that this is power to establish you. According to what? So these lines are going to represent according to. My gospel, Paul writes. So, it's Paul's. Paul's gospel. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. Right? Right? Preaching of Christ. I'm going to be paraphrasing on this board, y'all, and goodness I know my handwriting is atrocious. That's okay. Hopefully, uh, what? Thank you, sis. Okay, see, we're learning, everybody. Thank you. That's the church right there, edifying, you know, joints fitly forming together. So, according to... The, my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to... Now get this. we got more according to's here. The revelation of the mystery. Alright, so revelation of the mystery is one way to preach Christ. And what's it say? Kept secret, right? Kept secret since the world began. That means this revelation of the mystery, it was kept Secret, right? It says, but now it's made manifest. So we know it now. It's not kept secret anymore, but you need to know this to understand what's going on. It says, and. Do you know what the word and means? And means in addition to. So you, you could float that back to the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the Revelation mystery and the preaching of Jesus Christ by the Scriptures of the Prophets. So there's two ways to preach Jesus Christ. A lot of people do not know that. Scriptures of the prophets. But the, if you believe your Bible, and I do, that's what it tells us. And, and why is it that way? And so, I want you to jump real quick to uh, back to Romans 1, the very beginning of Romans. Sometimes we flip back and forth here. Paul writes, Paul, servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separate unto the gospel of God. So you have this gospel of God. Look at verse 2, which he had promised before. So Paul's gospel is in accordance with the gospel of God. The gospel, right? The gospel. And this gospel, it says, was promised before. So this was not kept secret. So Paul's gospel is according to this preaching of Christ, according to the Revelation of history, and the Scripture of the Prophet. And since this was kept secret, and Paul knew about this, and he was teaching us about this, you could kind of draw a line here and say, Paul's gospel was kept secret, because it, this was promised before, this was not. But, now it's made manifest, right guys? There's, this is no longer secret. 
We're just revealing it to you now. And for many of you, this might be the first time you're ever hearing this stuff. And that's a real shame if it is. Now, this revelation of the mystery, he's mentioning in Romans, but he doesn't really get into it until Ephesians. And we're not going to look at that today. That's a whole other teaching. But there's a reason why Paul's laid out all of this. And so, if you look in Romans 1, he says, look at 1.5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for what? Obedience to the faith, right? So all of this... Right, you have all this, it is for obedience to the faith. The faith, right? Not just any faith. The faith. Okay? So, and he says, look down in uh, verse 11, Paul writes that, I, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. And a lot of people think he was going around and and giving people tongues and all that, but he, he gives us the interpretation with this verse. It says, to the end that ye may be established. Right? So this is for our establishment. For establishment. Now look at that. So in the beginning of Romans, he tells you, what, we're, what I'm about to teach you is for your establishment. And then at the end of Romans, it's the power to establish you. So, Gives you a good idea of what's contained in the middle of Romans, right? Yeah. Doctrine, understanding, power to establish you. Okay? And uh, flip back to 16 again, Romans 16. He says, uh, Now is made manifest, and by the scripture of the prophets, according to, right, the commandment of the everlasting God. So all this is actually commandment of God. This ain't just Paul's, you know, his best idea. He just thinks it should be this way. He's giving you a partial understanding. All of this is commandment of the everlasting God. That lets you know that's God the Father right there. Yeah. So this stuff is commandment, guys. Like so if you're if you're a practicing Christian, you should know this stuff because this is a commandment of God. And look what he says next. It's made known to how many nations? All of them. Are you part of a nation? Yep. So, to you. It's made known to you. Look. Made known. That tells you the reason he said that is because he's letting you know that these secrets are no longer being kept. They're revealed. Right? That's why he says, but now is made manifest. And this is all for what? Again, obedience to the faith. Right? And so, I want to kind of hone in on this right here. This is going to come up, and this is crazy that I put this all together, and God didn't show me until I was driving here, that this very much ties with my final point. This preaching of Jesus Christ according to two different ways. And you absolutely have to know these two different ways if you're going to do the gospel well. Because if you only preach Jesus according to this, you are missing something. You are missing this secret and some knowledge, and you are not going to be established, right? This is all, Paul tells you, this is everything you need in order to be established. Okay. Amen. So now that you got that, this might be the most difficult part is erasing because this guy going to get all crazy. Let's see, I got some, some spray here. Some solvent. Oh, thank you. Assist, low assistant. I got three boards for you. This is the first one. Boy, this got, did I get switched to permanent marker or something? <laughs> it's crazy. It wasn't as hard yesterday. Right, Thanks, Leslie. Okay. There you go. Let me just get it close. It don't have to be perfect. Give me some spray here. Church helping out the church. Go on. Okay. All members of the body. Yep. Fitly formed. Okay. Looks good. All right, y'all. So, next thing I want to look at is Romans six, seventeen. Paul writes, six seventeen says, "But God be thanked that ye were the servants of skin, ye ain't no more, okay? But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine." So this tells us there is a form of doctrine. And uh, 
in, I believe it's 2 Timothy 1.13, Paul says, he tells Timothy to hold fast that form of sound words. Right? I don't know if you all know that. Sound words. So there's a form to this stuff, guys. There's a way, there's a reason the Holy Spirit put the Bible together the way it did. There's a reason that Romans is first and, and, and it goes like that. And so what I want to look at today a little bit is, well, why do we care what... Uh, sorry about that. Why do we care what Paul has to say anyway? Who is Paul? Why does it matter what Paul wrote to us? Well, let's look. Go back to Romans 1. Paul gives you a little bit of a formal induction in Romans 1. He says, Paul, a servant of Christ. So Paul is a servant of Christ. Right? He says, uh, called to be an apostle. Okay? Paul is called to be apostle. Uh, I, was, I mentioned Timothy. Uh, we're actually heading there. Second Timothy, you know, if you can get there. Second Timothy 1. We're going to read a few passages out of here. He says, um, 1, 8, 13. He says, Be thou, be thou not, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me, his prisoner. So Paul is a prisoner of Christ. He says, 2 Timothy yeah, 1, 8, we're starting in. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Guys, that's what I'm really trying to do up here. I'm trying to get you to understand you have a holy calling. A lot of people don't preach on it. They don't tell you about it, but I'm going to. He says, not according to our works. Careful of that Galatianism. Thinking you please God according to the law. That's not what Scripture reveals. But according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, whoa, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, amen, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Paul writes, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Okay, so we get a preacher. Apostle, there we got that one, and a teacher. Preacher and teacher. And he said all this, is uh, to the Gentiles, right? Uh, that matters. Okay, so look at uh, look at Romans eleven thirteen. I want to prove something for you. I want to drive that point home. Romans thirteen. Paul writes, "For I speak to you, Gentiles. That's us, guys. Inasmuch as I am the." Apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify my office. So he is the apostle, right? That is that really matters. That he is the guy. This is why, you know, we don't elevate Paul. He's just a man, but Paul's got something for us. He is the apostle of the Gentiles. So we might want to listen to maybe what Paul said, being we are Gentiles, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Go to Romans 15. Look what Paul writes in here. He says, verse 15, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. Paul is given a dispensation of grace for him to carry out this. And it says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles ministering the gospel of God. So Paul is... The apostle, he is the minister to us Gentiles. And why isn't this well known in the Christian world? I don't know. The devil, I guess. But it's just not. And it's in your Bible, if you believe your Bible, and I do. This is what it reveals to us. So, we're getting an idea that Jesus, or Paul, I'm sorry, 
He was sent by Jesus. How do I know that? It doesn't say that. Eric, preachers making stuff up up there. I'll go to Galatians. Galatians 1. I'll show you. 1.1. 1, 1. Paul writes, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Paul's man, an apostle, by Christ, and God the Father, who has raised him from the dead. So Paul absolutely was sent by Christ, because Christ the one who made him an apostle. Right? Do you see that? Go to uh, 1 Timothy again. It's funny how these all lined up. I didn't mean them to be the same books, but they just are. 1 Timothy this time, no, not 2. I love, you always want to pay attention to the beginning of a book and the end of a book, man. You can learn a lot from this. So, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and now you see that it was Christ himself that made it this way. By the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy. So he's writing unto Timothy by commandment of God again. See that? So, to completely ignore Paul, who is our minister, he is the apostle to the Gentiles, commanded of God to give us some information to ignore Paul is also to, to ignore Christ in a way, right? Do you see it? I see it, because he, Paul was sent by Christ, right? Okay, one more board for you guys. This is going a lot better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> I don't know if any of this is legible online. We're going to keep, we'll keep improving on it, but I know God's, He wants me to know how to do this, because this visual stuff is a great way to teach, man. I know it helps me. And I put a lot of time into this yesterday. Pretty much sun up to sun down, no way. To make this all work out. This is going to be the trial we're on this next board because there's a lot to fit on here. And it's just hard to make it all fit. This is just a small board. but We can't make it any bigger because it was funny. The children almost were like put into prison on the way here because we had to have the board like in between the seats. So they're just like in this little cubicle. <laughs> Poor guy, sorry, thanks for bearing with me to make this all happen. It's pretty cute, really. Yeah, we'll have to ride up, strap it to the roof or something. Okay, two, Timothy. Uh, three, go ahead and flip here, guys. Two, Timothy, three. And we're going to put 15, 16. I'm going to go ahead and put my next one here. Two, Timothy. 2.15. All right, 2 Timothy 3. This is, this is, I did all of this for this board here. So you'll see um, what I'm getting at here. This all has a purpose. 2 Timothy 3.15. It says, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. You see that? These Scriptures are able to make us wise unto being saved. And it's through what? Faith in Christ. Okay? And, and Paul writes, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So, all Scripture. All Scripture given by God. So, would that mean that the stuff Paul wrote is given by God? Yeah, it says all Scripture. Okay, now flip over to 2 Timothy uh, 2.15. Paul writes, study to shew thyself. We say show today, but it's shew back then. It means pretty much the same thing. Shew thyself approved unto God. Not go and blab all your information and all your... You went to theology school and you know this, this denomination is wrong because of this reason and argue all day long. That's not what Paul's writing. He says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? So we got to study, guys. Study your Bible. 
And we're going to be rightly, rightly dividing. I don't write a lot, apparently. I didn't notice how little I write until I had to start writing words again. Man, I'm like, wow, I got some holes in my game. All right, so here we go. Proof passages. This is going to get really good now. James chapter 2. It's towards the end of your Bible if you're not aware. After Hebrews. All right, so we're even going to put that up here. James. James 2, and I got 21 to 24. Check this out. James writes in his epistle. He uses Abraham here. Look, he says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac up his son upon the altar? Question mark. Seeing thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect? Question mark. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. So you see here, by works. A man is justified. We're in James, right? Y'all see that? I'll read it again. You see then how that by works a man is justified. That's what James says. Okay? All right, go to Romans 4. And he even says, not faith only. Romans 4. And I love this. God show me. Hey, we're using Abraham again. Check this out. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. So, now Romans 4 says, justified not by works. Now what's going on here, guys? Not by works in Romans 4. This is Romans 4. And it is by works in James. Y'all see that? That's a little bit. So, is Scripture wrong? Was Paul false apostle? What's going on here, preacher? Well, I'm going to show you. Look at Romans uh, 1 again. Look at verse 7. Who's, right, who's Paul writing to? To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Right? So, Paul's writing to saints. Okay, and now look at James. Go to James one one. Let's see who James is writing to. It says James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. So James is writing to these twelve tribes. Well, who's the twelve tribes? Do you all know? Israel. It's Israel. Yeah, very good. So this is Israel, and the saints. This is the body of Christ. How do I know this? I'll show you. All right, um, we're going to go to Galatians 6. I like these messages that jump around a lot too. It forces you all to learn your Bible or get left in the dust. <laughs> I'll wait for you though. If you, if you ever really want to, just please say, preacher, please slow down. I absolutely will. Sometimes I just get going and I'm not paying attention to every individual body. So Galatians 6. You want to help me get there, Mom? Six verse. It's good to get your eyes on the page. And I don't like any awkward silence, but honestly, guys, the whole reason I did all this is so you can get eyes on the page, you can make the connections in your mind, because that's what's going to click for you, man. I'm just a man. Just, I just have human words. They don't mean a whole lot. But, but God's Word means everything. And I want to show you what His Word says. I was in church for years. No one ever taught me this stuff. No one ever showed me any of this. I had to figure it out on my own. And, and I'm so thankful to God that I do have some preachers and teachers in my life now 
that are edifying me, helping me to understand God's Word. And this stuff right here is really what was able to take me to the next level. The Bible completely opened up to me, and, and I've got a hunger and a love for it now like I'd never had, like I'd never had before when I didn't understand. When I would read one day, by works man is justified. Okay, got to keep the law. Oh, sorry, God, ain't keeping the law. Maybe tomorrow I will. And then you find justified not by life. Thank God, hallelujah, man. That's a load off. And then what's that? Toss to and fro. One day I'm doing works. One day I'm not doing works. And so let's dig in to find out what's going on. In the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 15, uh, Paul writes, For in Christ Jesus. So when you're in Christ, we call that being in His body. There's several scriptures. I didn't pull them all out today for time's sake to show you that we are the body of Christ. But that's what that means when you're in Christ. You're in His body. Neither circumcision, and in this context, that's talking about Jews, okay? Jews had the circumcision ordinance, availeth anything. So he's saying, uh, what it profits the Jew in, in their flesh and in the world, it's not helping them. It's not profiting them when you're in Christ. He says, nor uncircumcision, that's referred to us, the Gentiles, but a new creature. So the only thing that embales in Christ is this new creature. And I didn't put this in the notes. A lot of people get confused with being born again and being a new creature. They sound the same, right? They're not. There's a reason why the Bible calls one born again, calls one a new creature. It uses different language because they're different things, right? Because if it was the same thing, why wouldn't it just be born again the whole way through, right? Why confuse us? He's not confusing. He's showing you there's a line there. There's a difference, okay? So, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them. Who's them there? You know? That's who he just told you. The, this body of Christ. Those in Christ. Where there is neither Jew nor Gentile. He's saying, peace be on those people. I'm going to use the word body of Christ for just for your mind's sake. Right? Body of Christ. He says, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel God. Well, and means in addition to, right? So there is this body of Christ where there is no Jew or Gentile, and then there's this Israel of God. There are two different camps, guys. You see that? You got a body of Christ, and you got an Israel of God. Yeah. Okay, do you see that? I, all right, so let's look at this. One of the most important things in the world is how to get saved. Would you agree? I didn't know how to get saved for a long time, man. It really messed up my walk made me think I was just cast off by God. I, I served sin hard. When you don't know you're saved, and you don't know where you're going, you think God's forsaken you, it's really easy to get beckoned by the devil back into the world. If you're like, well, if I'm burning anyway, I might as well live it up while I can now, you know? This knowledge of how to get saved is, is a game changer, man. But I, I, something else I want to know too, getting saved ain't the end of the line. There's no period there. It's actually day one for your Christian walk, but we'll get to that another day. So let's get into some more scriptures. And I like to, I use different parts of the Bible. This is towards the end. We're going to look at Matthew. Start flipping to Matthew 19 now. And then I use a passage in the beginning. So we can see this concept is all throughout the Bible. Matthew 19. I'm going to put it up on the board. I think I'm doing okay on spacing. I do need to crunch a little bit. I have a little picture over here to my right so I don't run out of room. Matthew 19. 16 to 22. Okay. Everybody there? This is a good teaching. I want you all to see this one. So I'm waiting. Looks like everyone's there. Alright. And behold, one came and said unto him, and unto him is Jesus, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He's asking Jesus, how do I get saved, bro? I want to know. And what a great question. I can't think of a better one that I would have asked Christ myself. Here's what Christ says. And he says unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So Christ tells him, If you want to get saved, you got to keep the commandments. Whoa. Uh, is that a two M's? Yeah. <laughs> commandment. Keep the commandments, right? And here's where it gets good. Oh, man. Here's where it gets good, guys. 
I don't know how we all missed this, man. I, I've been preached to this before, and I never made this connection. The guy says unto him, which Jesus, or he said unto him, which Jesus says, uh, thou shalt do not murder, thou shalt do not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. He's given them all of the law of Moses there. And, and man, he could have been there a long time. You know, if you ever research that law, it's very long. Paul writes in Galatians, those that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? Like, you don't know what you're asking for, basically. So Jesus starts giving him this list. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Can you believe this guy? I mean, whoa. At the very least, he's prideful. He literally in his mind believed, I have not sinned against the law of Moses since I was young. Nailed it. Kept the whole thing perfectly all the time. Imagine the look on his face and he's, he's saying that to Christ. I mean, he's probably beaming. Like, yes, I'm getting in. I kept the whole law. Alright, well, let's see what Christ says to him, right? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So, not only do you got to keep the commandments, guess what? It's commandments plus. Sell everything you got. And, and I like too how he gave him an extra step. He didn't say, go and give everything to the poor. No, you got to sell it first and then give that to the poor. Sell everything and give away. Gave you an extra step. So, not only, I don't know if you ever realize in your walk, guys, that keeping the commandments perfectly all the time is an impossible thing. It says, verily, if righteousness come by the law, what? Christ is dead in vain. Jesus is making a point here, right? And the guy comes back and says, got it. Well, all right, Mr. Perfect, go sell everything you have. Give it away. And what's it say about the guy? When the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Guys, this is some sorrow land, man. If this is what your walk is going to be, your Christian walk, you're going to have sorrow. I'm telling you. And I even believe that if that guy, if it was in Scripture, that, that guy went home and sold everything, gave it away, and went back to Jesus and said, Jesus, I nailed it. I gave everything away. I really believe Jesus would have gave him something else to do too because he was making a point. Like, eternal life was never going to come by this list of works and these commandments. All right, now go to Ephesians 2. Because, I mean, our Savior, man, why would we hang Him on a cross if we could just keep the law and get into heaven, right? Seems like a waste of blood and a really sad day for the Son of God. If that wasn't necessary, think about it. Ephesians 2, verse 8. You've heard this verse many, many times. It says, For by grace... Are ye saved through faith? Amen. Saved here is grace. Through what? Faith. Through faith. Okay? It's grace. Through faith. Okay? And look how it expressly says, and that not of yourselves. What do you think that means? It means not keeping these commandments perfectly. Right? That's yourself. Doing your own works. And then it expressly says, it is the gift of God. Guys, salvation is a free gift of God. You, didn't, you did nothing for it. You can't earn it. You can't lose it either. Look at verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's what we would all do, right? If we got in heaven, based upon any works at all, you'd have one guy who said, you know, I went and visited a hundred uh, widows and spent all my time caring for them and brushing her hair and washing her dishes. And I go, oh, that's nothing, man. I drove the whole country around passing out Bible tracts. And that's what eternity would be. If humans had anything to do with getting in there, that's all you'd hear, man. I'd be like, Lord, make me deaf. I don't want to hear it anymore. He removed our ability to brag, guys. So all the glory... It's going to be His. I had this concept the other day that we've all been given this measure of faith in our lives according to you know who we were and what we've done. And when we get to heaven, guys, 
God's going to have given us a measurement of grace. And we're going to be walking billboards to His grace and mercy. As we live our lives up there, we're going to be declaring God's awesomeness and His love for His creation. That is beautiful, man. And that's why He did it all and you didn't do any of it. This is not of works. Right? Are you getting an idea of how this thing is going? It's not of works. This is absolutely works. Okay? So let's look at who's Ephesians written to again. Uh, Ephesians, I don't know if I wrote down the actual passage. Oh, to Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God, to the saints, again, which are at Ephesians, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So this is to the faithful in Christ. You could also refer that to his body, right? Well, who is Jesus speaking to? Right? I always thought he was speaking to me directly. I mean, I had some fire sermons, teachings like I've never heard before. Was he, was he speaking to the body of Christ too? Well, let's find out. Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10, another really good passage. Find out what's going on with our Bible. It says, and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, the names of the twelve apostles are these. I'm not going to name them. You can read them for yourself. Skip on down to five. These twelve he just named, Jesus sent forth and commanded them. This is commandment of Jesus Christ saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather... To who? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's the Israel guys. Jesus commanded His guys, all 12 of them, to only go to Israel, right? So this is to Israel. Jesus was talking to Israel. Paul is talking to the faithful in Christ, His body. These two camps are not the same thing. You know, bless, peace be on them and the Israel of God. Remember, that's, that's how... There's a reason this stuff's in your Bible, guys. Nobody is rightly dividing it to understand. Everybody's like, oh, it's, all, it's the same gospel from beginning to end. No, it's not, guys. One says works, one says not works. How is that the same thing? It can't be. You, you are uh, being an ostrich and burying your head into the sand if you don't see this, guys. You don't want to see it. The God of this world has blinded your minds. Really, if you cannot see what's going on here. And there's an explanation for it. I'm going to get to it at the end. i got one more proof passage for you. Let's go into the book of Exodus, right? This is Moses and his crew and how this whole thing got really kicked off and started. Genesis, Exodus 22. Yeah, it's your second book in the Bible. Look, these girls know every book in the Bible, like off heart. It's crazy. It's impressive to do it. I can't do that. Exodus 22. I'm sorry. 22. And we'll put that up on the board. Exodus 22, 18 and 19, I believe. Here you get something you got to do. It says, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Well, that's a little harsh. So I'm going to paraphrase. You get, you got to kill witches. Okay. Look at the next verse. Whoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. All right, lie with beast. Surely means, like shall means it's a guarantee. There's no wiggle room. Lie with a beast, put to death. Bye. You done. Okay. That's Exodus. That's, that's the law, guys. This stuff right here, keep the commandments. Did you know that's actually included with that? It's not just the pretty ones, guys. It's not the ones you like. It's all of them. You see a witch, they got to die. You see somebody who lied with a beast, they did. I mean, that's the Old Testament, guys. It's brutal. It, that's what the law is. Now go uh, back to Ephesians again.
So what's going on with all this? We're about to find out. Colossians, okay, Ephesians 4, and let me put that up on the board. Ephesians 4, and it's verse 32. I should have had somebody read these to me. I would have made this easier. That would have been helpful. And I could have did the board and had you all read. I guess you don't have my microphone. That wouldn't really work. 32. Look at Paul writes. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted. That's something I'm working on right now. God's getting a hold of me on that one. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So Ephesians 4 tells us that we've got to forgive one another. Now guys, uh, if you're forgiving one another, does that mean you're also putting people to death? No. No. Not very forgiving, is it? Kind of like a final thing to do. These two, they don't go together, guys. And when we talk about rightly dividing, we talk about rightly dividing these things that differ. You don't rightly divide things that are the same. Right? If you learn something from anywhere in your Bible and it lines up with everything taught to the body of Christ, it's something you should be doing. But these are things that can never be reconciled together. You cannot reconcile justified not by works with by works being justified. You cannot reconcile grace with keeping the commandments. Do you see it? You cannot put somebody to death and also forgive them. They can't go together. Right? So... So why? What's going on here? Go to Galatians 3. God told us, man. He told us why it was this way. It's beautiful. I want to put that up on the board. Galatians 3. Uh, 25. 25. This is one I want you all to help. Mom, can you help? So, I just hope that you guys can see this stuff, guys. This expressly not of works, right? This is keep the commandments. And this ain't even just keep the commandments. It's keep the commandments plus. How has come I never heard that ever in a church anywhere? You want to get saved according to Christ and His ministry? Keep the commandments and sell everything you got. Show me a Christian today who's like, yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do with my life. Go sell everything I have and keep the law perfectly. No one ever preaching on that. Why? Well, because they don't know it, really. That's the sad part. Pray for him. Uh, 21. 321. Is the law then against the promises of God? Right. Is this stuff against God's promises? Is that what we're getting at? What's the answer? God forbid. No. That's not what's going on. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Guys, if it was possible to get saved according to this, we would have found it. We would have done it. Right? But the Scripture hath concluded all under sin. Remember that out of Romans 3? That the promises, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. You're starting to see that it's about this faith again. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. So before Christ... So look, you have this cross, right? Before Christ, we were kept under this law. Shut up under the faith which should afterwards be revealed. This stuff wasn't revealed yet, guys. This cross was hiding it. Remember the first board kept secret, now made manifest? There was something done at the cross that God had not revealed to mankind yet. Before this cross came, we were kept under this. Okay? It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, guys. This is our schoolmaster. What does a schoolmaster do? He teaches you. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to do. To bring us unto Christ. This was to bring us to this. Okay? To bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Right? Yeah. This was to get us to here. Do you see that? All of this was to teach us that we need Him. It's all about faith. It's not about this stuff. Okay? But after that faith is come, is Jesus come? 
He done come, right? We are no longer under a schoolmaster. Guys, I hate to do this, but we're not under this anymore. This was to teach us something. We learned the schoolmaster brought us to this faith. Do you see it, guys? Do you see it? This is what's going on. It's not that Paul's a false apostle or the Bible's incorrect. See, Eric Mann wrote the Bible. Look at all the mistakes he made. This verse contradicts. There's nothing that contradicts, guys. It's just different parts of your Bible are speaking to different people. You're not Israel, man. And if you are, you're going to have a bad day. You're back to killing witches and selling everything you got. So look, I got one more passage for you. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This, this is how it all lined up for me on the way here. It was really neat. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to go to verse 15. I'm going to wait for y'all. This, this is the most important passage, I really think, because I, I really hope that this nails it home in your mind. What's going on here? Mommy the helper, thank you, sis. It says, 5.15. It says, and that he died for who? All. All. Thank you, Jesus. That they which should, they which live should not henceforth, meaning from here on out, live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them, and, that's a huge and right there in your Bible, means in addition to, he rose again. He says, wherefore, henceforth again, guys, from here on out, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we Him no more. I didn't understand what in the world Paul was talking about there for the longest time. Now I get it. This Christ in His earthly ministry in your four Gospels is Him in His flesh. That's, it's that simple. It's Christ after the flesh. He's saying we don't know Christ after the flesh anymore because Christ told you you get saved by the law and selling everything you had. And He wasn't ever going to stop there, guys. He was here to teach you. Think about it when He, when he slayed every man in the audience when, when He said, you know, adultery, you think you commit adultery, or have you even thought it, looked at a woman with lust? So it's like you, you have to keep the law. You also have to keep the law perfectly in your thoughts. And if you get them under control, guess what? You're poor and broke. You don't have anything. Give it all away. Do you see, guys? He was showing us something, man. If all you ever do is preach Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you're preaching death. You're preaching this, guys. Kill. Death. You're preaching an impossibility. You're preaching a life eternal that can't exist because it can't be reconciled with faith. Look, I'm not saying don't preach Jesus Christ. He can teach us so much. But think of it the first one where it's there's two ways to preach Christ. If you're only preaching Him according to the Scriptures of prophets, that's what this is. He was prophesied to come. And a lot of people don't know, a lot of it's still to happen. His second coming. That's the preaching of the Scriptures of Jesus Christ. Preaching of Jesus Christ according to the Scriptures of promise, prophets. And then you have the revelation of the mystery. This, this thing God was hiding in Himself kept secret, revealed to Paul. Guys, it's called grace through faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. There was no other way it could be done. Us Gentile dogs were toast without this design, with this perfect will of God to come together like this, guy. This is why we need to study, guys. This is why we need to rightly divide. Guys, if you're going into James and you're preaching sermons, you're preaching death, guys. You just are. It's not meant for you. It's meant for Israel. Like, how can we put God in such a small box to think He can't deal with different people in different ways? Right? And Israel is going to be purged too. They're going to come to faith as well. God's not done with Israel either. Jacob's trouble, all that stuff, that's still to come, man. Those prophecies are not all fulfilled. We're not there yet. How do we know that? Well, Christ ain't come back yet. That's how we know. Right? So I hope I was able to help you guys get this in your, in your head. One of these is not of works. One of these is works, man. One of these is grace. And one of these is law. So, your choice, y'all. I love you. Thank you. Hopefully this was not too much of a disaster. <laughs> Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this message, Lord. I really hope to help make the, 
make the lines in, in people's minds, get it to click, God, that they're under grace, they're not under the law anymore, God, and help get them see. I know when I learned this, often we want to go back to that Galatianism and, and serve you according to the law. It's not about that, God. It's about faith in your Son, and we just thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the spirit of wisdom, God, and revelation and the knowledge of your Son, of Christ. I ask you to give that spirit to anyone who hears my voice right now, God, that they may know the truth that is in your Word. When we know these things, God, boy, it just opens up the pages to us, Lord. The Bible never contradicts itself, God, and we always have full assurance in the knowledge of Son. And, and I pray all this, and anyone who's sick right now, it's like the whole country's sick, God, just be with them. Be everything they need, Father. We love you and we honor you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.